68 Sports presents Boston Red Sox baseball this afternoon from Fenway Park in Boston. The Red Sox play game two of a home opening three game series against the Seattle Mariners. Hi everybody and welcome once again to Red Sox baseball. We're glad to have you along. Doug Brown in for Sean McDonough along with Jerry Remy. Well, it's the day after, Jerry, and uh, I'm sure the Red Sox would probably like uh, maybe another day or two to bask in yesterday's dramatic 9-7 to win here on home opening day, but uh, it's time to get right back at it today, and you wonder what even Pedro Martinez might be able to come up with for an encore. Well, it's going to be tough, certainly, to top the excitement of the late innings yesterday, but, uh, you know, teams, uh, baseball, obviously play every day, so it's uh, tough for the Red Sox. You get to enjoy it last night. You got to get right back after this afternoon, but Seattle's very happy to get back at it. They want to put that behind them. This afternoon, the Red Sox fans at Fenway get their first look at Pedro Pedro Martinez and if he's anything like he's been in the first two starts it's going to be a lot of fun again here this afternoon and the matchup is interesting as well Jerry because uh, with three left handers going for the Mariners this weekend former Red Sox lefty Jamie Moyer gets the start and he had a terrific outing his last time out what a contrast from Randy Johnson Johnson with the 95 mile an hour fastball you're going to see a lot of change ups today from Jamie Moyer but he's been a very very effective pitcher for Seattle over the last couple of seasons all right we've got another ball game coming up here from Fenway Park later today of course opening day yesterday here at Fenway Park but another special day today it's kids open Opening day, so let's turn it over to the public address announcer here at Fenway Park, Ed Brickley. And now, ladies and and now, ladies and gentlemen, for today's starting lineup, leading off number five, the 1997 American League Rookie of the Year, shortstop Nomar Garcia Para, and his buddy. J.J. Deddy. <laughs> Batting second, number 13, third baseman, John Valentin, and his buddy, Denise Garcia. <laughs> Batting third, number 42, the 1995 American League MVP, first baseman Mo Vaughn, and his buddy Jason Garcia. Batting fourth, number 31, the designated hitter Jim Layritz, and his buddy Jerry Coffey. Batting fifth, Number 25, left fielder Troy O'Leary and his buddy Lauren Gately. Batting sixth, number two, center fielder Damon Buford and his buddy Eddie Murphy. Batting seventh, number 10, catcher Scott Hatterberg and his buddy Christopher Benavides. <laughs> Betting seventh, number 20, right fielder Darren Lewis and his buddy Darcy Randall. <laughs> Betting ninth, number 28, second baseman Mike Benjamin and his buddy Tom Nelson. Pitching today for the Red Sox, warming up in the center field bullpen, the 1995 National League Cy Young Award winner, Pedro Martinez. All right, thank you very much, Doug Brown, and your buddy, Jerry Remy who will have the call today of Pedro Martinez's debut. What a nice thing over at Fenway today. Today's starting pitchers are brought to you, as always, by your New England Ford dealers. Good matchup, Pedro Martinez in his Fenway debut. So far this year, one win and a tough luck, no decision. ERA in the single digits below. 20 strikeouts and five walks. Jamie Moyer for Darren Bragg. Remember that trade? Both teams made out pretty well, but look at Moyer. 13 strikeouts and only one walk in his two decisions. A third start for both. It's at Fenway. It's 68 Sports. Doug Brown and Jerry Remy have the call coming up. So it's Red Sox baseball. Don't go anywhere. 68 Sports presents Boston Red Sox. 
Back at Fenway Park, set for game two of the 1998 season here at home. Pedro Martinez making his first Fenway start for the Red Sox, and here's the lineup he'll face for the Seattle Mariners. Joey Cora, the second baseman leading off. Alex Rodriguez at shortstop batting second. Ken Griffey Jr. plays center and bats third. Edgar Martinez, the DH, batting fourth. David Segui is the first baseman batting fifth. The left fielder is Glenn Allen Hill. And then some changes from yesterday's lineup for Lou Pinella. Rick Wilkins is the catcher batting seventh. Russ Davis stays at third, batting eighth. And in the right, in the right field spot, batting ninth, is Charles Gibson, the rookie. Pedro Martinez getting it started here at Fenway Park, his first appearance in front of the home fans, Jerry. And start number three on the season for Martinez, a record of 1-0 with a 0.64 ERA, 20 strikeouts for Martinez, only five walks, and he's allowed one earned run so far this season. He's faced Oakland. He faced a very tough uh, lineup in Anaheim last time out on April 6th, and probably the toughest of all this afternoon, the Seattle Mariners. Through his first two starts, opposing batters are hitting just 200 even against Pedro Martinez. Today's defense brought to you by Toyota. Here's how the Red Sox stack up defensively today for Jimmy Williams. Troy O'Leary back in the starting lineup in left. Damon Buford in center. Darren Lewis over in right. Valentin, Garcia Parra, Benjamin at second, and Vaughn at first, left to right in the infield. Scott Hatterberg gets the start behind the plate. And Pedro Martinez on the mound. Red Sox, of course, with the three errors yesterday keeping them in last place in the American League defensively, Jerry, but uh, everybody forgot all the bad stuff yesterday. You know, all smiles, the three errors, nothing mattered. The two hits through the uh, first seven or eight innings after the big ninth inning comeback. Well, when you walk off the field with a win like that, all's forgotten uh, those first eight innings. You just think about the ninth. Pedro Martinez set to unleash it for the first time here at Fenway. to Joey Cora. First pitch swinging popped up in the infield, headed toward Mo Vaughn, who takes charge. And on one pitch, one out for the Mariners. Something you don't see very often is a bat break on a pop-up to the infield. But again, as we mentioned so many times, a lot of thin handle bats with the large barrel, and that causes that bat to snap a lot of time right in the hands of the hitter. I've thought for the last couple of years, Jerry, that there are a lot more bats breaking now than there were, say, 10, 20 years ago. Well, I think that's one of the reasons yeah. uh, players like that thin handled bat to get the whip in the action. And uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of times those bats uh, are unbalanced and snap like that. First pitch to Alex Rodriguez is a strike. Rodriguez two for five in the ball game yesterday with one run batted in and a triple off the top of the low wall in right field. Rodriguez also up in the air towards center field and Buford for the second out. Might be a little more difficult for outfielders and infields with this one o'clock start this afternoon. No clouds up above to help out and You'll see most of the players with the sunglasses. They'll use the glove to help out. And you can see the flag uh, out in left center field. Very rare for April blowing out across the green monster. After blowing in and towards right for most of the day yesterday. Usually when we see that type of wind, it's about 80 degrees here at Fenway. Not the case this afternoon, but still very comfortable, especially for the players. Yeah, certainly can't complain about the weather. Maybe a little nicer than yesterday with less of a breeze. Ken Griffey Jr. takes a pitch just off the inside corner for ball one. John Shulock working the plate. Don Denkinger at first, Rick Reed at second, Tim Sheeta over at third. And 2-0 to Griffey. Marquee matchup here, a National League Cy Young Award winner against the MVP in the American League a year ago. Griffey won for three yesterday, a double on what was a fan interference play down in right field as he misses badly on the breaking pitch. Two and one on Griffey. 
There's the good changeup by Martinez. So we've mentioned this over and over that he will throw that pitch at any time to any batter, any time in the count. And now two and two. Backs it up again. Two changeups in a row, and that one acted like a screwball working down and away from Griffey. Great view from our lower angle camera on the third base side, and a line shot by Griffey, but into the shift, right into the hands of Nomar Garcia Para for a 1 2 3 inning for Pedro Martinez in the top of the first. Red Sox coming up at Fenway on the 68 Sports Red Sox Television Network. Today's starting lineups brought to you by your friendly New England Dodge dealers. The more things change, the more things look like the new Dodge. And for the Red Sox, Nomar Garcia Parra leading off at short. John Valent in the third baseman hitting second. Mo Vaughn batting third. The DH Jim Lairitz in the cleanup spot again today. Troy O'Leary back in the starting lineup playing left batting fifth. Damon Buford batting sixth. Scott Hatterberg the catcher in the seventh spot. Darren Lewis the right fielder batting eighth. And Mike Benjamin playing second base today for the Red Sox batting ninth against the left-hander Jamie Moyer one and one on the season for Moyer coming off a big win against the Yankees seven innings in that game three hits no runs and had 11 strikeouts and he's in for a strike with his first pitch to Garcia Parra had a great year 17 and five last year in 30 starts for the Seattle Mariners and just missing the corner that time one and one and the Red Sox will see a lot of that a lot of change ups to those right handed hitters on the outside part of the plate. Just outside again, two and one from Moyer. Well, everybody talks about Randy Johnson and the amazing winning percentage that the Mariners have when Johnson starts. Moyer isn't too far behind since he's been with the Mariners. Chop foul at the plate. Now, last year, Moyer was the got an awful lot of runs every time he started. I think they averaged something like seven runs a game when he was pitching, but he had a very respectable 3.86 ERA. So not only did he get runs, but he pitched very well. That's uh, more than respectable in the American League these days, it seems. On the ground for Garcia Parra to his opposite number, Alex Rodriguez, for the first out. And that's exactly what Moya wants those right handers to do. He's going to keep the ball away, hope they try to pull it, and a lot of times the result will be the ground ball, either shortstop or third base. I think a lot of the right handers have to think about going up the middle and the other way against Moya. John Valentin. Takes a strike. Valentin set the stage for Mo Vaughn's dramatics here yesterday by taking one for the team, getting hit by a pitch, forcing in a run, setting up the Vaughn Grand Slam. Randy Johnson, probably along with the rest of the Mariners, thinking that, yeah, it's a good thing you play every day in this game, as Valentin grounds a base hit into left field. Although unlike the other players who don't get to who get to come out and play again today Johnson doesn't play again for several days. Here's the ovation now for Mo Vaughn. The second walk off game winning home run of Mo Vaughn's career yesterday. And only the second Grand Slam ever in a home opener at Fenway Park. The other one was by Carlton Fisk 25 years ago against the Yankees. Mo just got a piece of that. It's interesting listening to the crowd reaction for Vaughn. Yesterday, when they first introduced the lineups, I thought there were more cheers than boos, but there were some boos in there. But then when he got up to the plate for the first time, there were more cheers than today. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and of course, there was a lot of interesting by play after the game yesterday. What with Moe's contract situation. Swings through it, one and two. John Valentin was asked by one of the reporters so do you sign Mo now or not and John said well that the price keeps going up is a line that has been heard before with the way 
Mo has been swinging the bat this spring. Not that time, though. Fooled by the offerings of Jamie Moyer and the first strikeout victim. Well, Mo had a couple of strikeouts yesterday against Randy Johnson until he had the chance against Buljarek in the ninth inning to hit the home run. Good pitch by Mo. Moya. Fastball keeps it away from Vaughn. He's going to make him use the opposite field. And that time, no contact. Vaughn actually has had quite a bit of success in his career against Moyer. Now four for ten overall against Jamie with a couple of home runs. Jim Leritz. The DH again for the Red Sox today. Who like practically everybody else also had a very difficult time with Randy Johnson yesterday striking out three times. And then the fourth time he didn't strike out he got hit by a pitch instead. <laughs> One and one to Leritz. And on the corner for called strike two. And Jim Rowe, the Red Sox trainer, said he got way too much air time yesterday with all the guys getting hit by pitches and being on the field. I didn't think he felt after that game yesterday. What wow. a terrific, terrific performance by Randy Johnson. Leritz just reaches out and taps it into the gap in left center field, working all the way up to the wall. Let's see if Valentin tries to score. He's coming around third. And he's in. As the throw sails high over the head of Rick Wilkins, the Mariners catcher. But Valentin would have beaten it anyway. Looked like if the Mariners executed the relay properly, they might have had a chance at Valentin. Of course, they're going to take the chance with two outs on trying to get that run. Nice piece of hitting there by Larry. That ball is down and away, but he's still able to hook the ball in that gap in left center field. The throw from Rodriguez, the cutoff man, is going to be high up over the head of Wilkins, the catcher, and John Valentin will score with the head first slide. This ball's on the money. It might be close because Wilkins might be able to block home plate with that head first slide. The Red Sox take a 1 0 lead, and Troy O'Leary takes ball one. Ooh. Valentin very nearly took a kick in the head as Wilkins went up to try and get that throw. That'll get you into the game in a hurry. A belly flop slide to home sometimes knocks the wind out of you. Yeah, John looks like he's. Trying to shake that all off. He might have gotten clipped by the foot of Wilkins as he went by. <laughs> Setting up inside that time on O'Leary, but Moyer missing. The count now two and one. Here it is again. Diving oh, yeah. Right on the belt buckle for uh, John Valentin. And it did look like uh, the left side of his face was caught by the left foot of Wilkins on the way by. O'Leary grounds it down the first baseline fair. Great play by Segui. And the out at first. Good play on both ends. Segui and Moyer covering to rob O'Leary of a base hit. The Red Sox get one and they lead one nothing after the first inning at Fenway on the 68 Sports Red Sox Television Network. Well the Red Sox have the one nothing lead after one inning and a terrific play by David Segui saves his club another run. Covers a lot of ground of course being the left hander has to go to the backhand. He'll just kind of lay it up for uh, Jamie Moyer who does his job. Keeping uh, maintaining with that base and getting the out and that saves another run for the Mariners. Well speaking of saves and shots and all that good hockey talk we're out of season now for uh, for college hockey and for Olympic hockey but it's never out of season to talk to uh, the U.S. women's gold medal Olympic hockey coach Ben Smith. Congratulations Ben and uh, great thrill for all of you folks as that's a fair ball in front of Scott Hatterberg off the bat of Edgar Martinez and quickly one out here in the top of the second. Happy to have Ben Smith joining us here and uh, first of all congratulations. Thank you very much Doug certainly a pleasure for us uh, you know not our whole team didn't 
get a chance to get out here today, but we had a, you know, a good uh, uh, sprinkling of the local players, and our assistant coach Tom Much threw a pretty nice strike in the uh, <laughs> in the opening ceremony. So it's a great day and fun to see Martinez, and just a just a great thrill. But what I want to know is how come the head coach doesn't throw the ball? Yeah, I saw my old friend Bill Cleary in '89 after they won the national title come out here, and uh, he didn't quite get it to the plate, so he got razzed pretty good. I didn't want to take the chance. Blame it on the rotator cuff. <laughs> That's okay. We didn't have those when I was a kid, Jerry. I know the real reason you just didn't want to show up, Pedro Martinez. That's right, right? Wow, what a thrill to see. This is exciting to see him, and you know our our players got a great thill uh, when uh, the shortstop uh, Nomar Garcia Perry. You know, you you hear all sorts of great things about him. And uh, you know he was on the 92 Olympic team mm -hmm. in Barcelona. And he came over and said hi to, the pl to our players. It was a great thrill. David Segui up at the play right now after that terrific defensive play to end the bottom of the first, and he's behind in the count to Pedro Martinez 0 and 2, with one out here in the top of the second, and the Red Sox leading it by a score of one to nothing. Segui off to such a great start for the Mariners after signing as a free agent over from Montreal. One of the four guys on this Mariner team that has faced Pedro Martinez in the past. Well, as you mentioned, Ben, uh, so many of the players on your hockey team were from New England. It seems only fitting, uh, in a way, to have uh, as many as possible here today for Fenway Park's uh, second opening day, kids' opening day. Well, you know, if, if they're not from here, Doug, they they probably went to school here at uh, in you know the ECAC schools that have you know been in really in the on the in the cutting edge of women's athletics and especially women's hockey. So uh, a lot of our players have those good New England roots. Of course, a great uh, winter for hockey around these parts, not only because of what your team accomplished uh, over in Nagano, but also because of. The college hockey final four being held here uh, just last weekend and what a great event that turned out to be. Yeah you know I was talking to somebody the other day I was kind of embarrassed that you know the people in college hockey it took us I think it's taken us 25 years to get the championships back here and I think it's, it was great I think the fleet center was really excited and I, I think people in college hockey were really excited with it with the with the tournament too. 2-2 two -two pitch to Segui tap toward Garcia Parra and makes the play just nipping Segui at first for the second out. Well, once again, Nomar shows the quick hands because that last hop off the grass uh, came up on him, but he quickly got the glove in position uh, to make the throw to first base and get the out. What I want to know, coach, is after the tournament was over, of course, everybody was happy. You had a vacation in Hawaii after that, didn't you? Uh, the players did. Uh, oh, you didn't get to go. The, the huh? coach didn't get to go. I think they'd seen enough of the coach, so <laughs> I came home and kind of checked up on the end of the women's college season. We've got a lot of great uh, young uh, women playing, and I think that that's one of the byproducts of this great team of ours. I think there are a lot of young girls, and I think parents excited about you know giving their daughters a, a chance to play a great another great team sport is it too early to gauge uh, after just a couple of months what the the victory in Japan is going to mean for for girls hockey young kids wanting to grow up and be hockey players yeah I think I think it's early but I think uh, you know I've seen a lot of third graders in the last month and it seems like <laughs> everybody uh, boys and girls are we're, we're excited about it and it, hey, it's just like you know being here with this guy pitching wow this Martinez is look at the ballpark today it's buzz and everybody's in their seat before the before the game even started with him on the mound and nothing in two to Glenn Allen Hill with two outs as Martinez tries for his second consecutive one two three inning misses outside with the fastball. That ball pops pretty good in the glove, doesn't it? You can hear it all the way up here. Yeah. One and two from Martinez. And the swing and a miss. Hatterberg will apply the tag. Strikeout number one on the day for Pedro Martinez. Ben Smith, again, congratulations. Terrific job and uh, good luck the rest of the way. And, well, th uh, thank you very much. It's been exciting and it's awful nice for the Red Sox and you people to have us here today. Great. Thanks, Ben. Ben Smith, the coach of the women's gold medal United States women's hockey team. Another 1 2 3 inning for Pedro Martinez. 1 0 Sox after an inning and a half. And now, words from your local stations on the 68 Sports Red Sox Television Network. Red Sox have the 1 0 lead as we move to the top of the third at Fenway. Well, Red Sox fans, check out the new 24 hour touchstone ticketing by calling 617 4824 Sox. This new system is the easiest way to purchase tickets any time of day. Why not use the latest technology to purchase Red Sox tickets at America's oldest and most storied ballparks? Pedro Martinez set to work in the top of the third. Wilkins, Davis, and Gibson, 789 for the Mariners. And Rook Wilkins takes just low and off the inside part of the plate. Wilkins getting the start today. Behind the plate for the Mariners. 
giving Dan Wilson uh, Dan Wilson a breather and he's had some success against Martinez from his time in the National League hitting over 400 against Pedro you don't see many of those averages against Martinez it's just the four guys on the Mariners with previous experience against Pedro Martinez and Wilkins waves at the breaking pitch Segui Hill Wilkins and Wilson who's not playing the four who have faced Martinez from his days in the National League strikes out Wilkins Second strikeout in a row and of the game for Martinez. Well, for that strikeout lead now in the American League, uh, this fastball will pick up his second strikeout. Yesterday with the big day for Randy Johnson, he has 32 to lead the league. Now Martinez with the two this afternoon, 22. So 10 more and he's got him tied. <laughs> and eight more, Jerry, today. If Martinez gets up to 10 this afternoon, that will be his 1,000th career strikeout. Russ Davis taking outside 2 and 0 the count on Davis Russ Davis had himself three hits yesterday and you see that he is among the Mariners who are off to quick starts at the plate you look at the American League leaders in all the offensive categories and there are Mariners just scattered all over all the lists Martinez catches the corner. Russ Davis with an eight game hitting streak he's had at least one hit in every game he's played this year he had two home runs Wednesday night at home against the Yankees it's this one sharply into the Mariner dugout and back out again Lou never even flinched Lou's made a couple of good plays in this ballpark as a play with the Yankees there are some of those offensive numbers. We were talking about for the Mariners yesterday in fact the first game this season that the Mariners did not hit a home run but they still lead the American League by a wide margin with those 20 home runs. The next closest team is Cleveland they have 11 and the Baltimore Orioles have 10 Toronto has 12 home runs but Toronto's average only 211 as a team. The Red Sox has a team with nine home runs now after the two yesterday just getting a piece to follow it up is Davis off to our right. Count still full at three and two. Davis, who's had injury problems each of the last two years, broke his left leg and severely sprained his left ankle in 96. Then missed a good portion of last year with a sprained right ankle, and he fans. Number three for Martinez. Two down in the third. Two strikeouts now with the fastball, one with the breaking ball this afternoon. That fastball tailing back on the outside corner. That's a nasty pitch. I mean, a fastball that's up over 90 miles an hour with movement. Not much of a reaction from Pedro on that one. Now he struck out a couple of guys in the past. Yeah, it's a little early, too. Early in the ballgame. The number nine hitter, Charles Gibson. Youngster who was very impressive in spring training for the Mariners. Batted 455, including a couple of triples to make this ball club. Got his first two major league hits against the Yankees on Tuesday. 